Coach Pilardi here, CAD Level 2, Onshape for Vex Robotics. Now that we have an Onshape account, we can get in there and start doing things. But first we need to find our way around. So let's take a look at the user interface. So go ahead and log into your Onshape account. I'm logged in as a student test account over here. And when you first log in, you might see an empty page like this. Um, if somebody has set up some teams for you or shared some projects, you might see more than this. But most users are going to get this screen. At the top here, it's going to say on shape. That's just going to take you to the screen we're at right now. Um, you can search. There's a search bar here. There's a link to the App Store. There's a Learning Center. There's all kinds of uh, resources there if you click that button. There's also a Help menu. Uh, it takes you to the Learning Center there, too. And then um, over here, you can uh, take a look at your account um, and how your account is set up. On the left is the navigation panel that allows you to switch between different views of your home page. There's my on shape. There's recently opened. There's created by me. There's shared with me. And then there's public. Most of those are views of your stuff, except the public folder. That's all the projects that are in on shape that everyone has access to, the public projects, and there's thousands of them. If I click on copies here, I can see which projects have the most copies. That one has an awful lot of copies. Um, which ones have the most links? That one's very popular. Um, which ones have the most likes? If you select one of the projects from the center pane, it'll show you the details of that project in a pane on the right, um, including the owner, when it was created, when it was last modified, things like that. I can see I don't have any trash yet, keeping the place clean. So let's take a look at the searching feature up here. We have a box in here where you can type something and search for. I'm going to type nothing. And I got nothing. Oh, but I had trash selected on the left, so I'm searching for nothing within trash, and there's nothing in trash. Let's try public. So if we search in the public folder for nothing, there's a whole lot of nothing now. Or if we search for something more meaningful. Let's just try searching for Vex V5. All right, there's some stuff that we recognize. And you can see when these have been modified last. So here's the most recent. If you press the tiny arrow on the right side of the search box, it'll open a dialog that lets you refine your search. Let's try searching for projects that have a description of official VEX V5 library. All right, so here's some more detailed VEX parts. This is a parts library. We're going to talk about this more later. So we just searched by description. You could also search by name or type. You could search by part number if you're, if you're looking for something very specific. Um, you can even add your own search criteria. So let's do something here. Let's do a vendor called VEX and search on that. And there's a whole bunch of VEX parts out there. A lot of these are VEX Pro, not VEX V5. Let's go back and search for official VEX V5 library again. I can do a multi-select by clicking the top item on the list, scrolling down, holding the shift key down. I have everything selected. If I press the control key or command key, if you're a Mac user, I can deselect something and up here we have something that's called a label and looks like I don't have any labels um, so I'm going to create a new label I'm going to call it VEX PV5 parts all right that changed my navigation pane and now I have a new section called labels and there's a label I just created underneath there so a label is kind of like a safe search or a folder or a collection of bookmarks. It's just a way of organizing things that are important to you in Onshape. The labels that you create are right there in the navigation pane. So you can navigate to other places in Onshape and come back and all your stuff is right there. All right, you give it a shot. You're going to create your own VEX V5 parts label. Uh, instructions are on the screen there. Give it a shot. All right, you got your own VEX V5 parts label. Fantastic. Let's try another search. This time we'll look for VEX sampled drivetrain. 
and we got a whole bunch. Let's create another label and put all these drivetrains in there. First, we're going to create the label. And note there's nothing in the label yet, though. So when I go there, there's nothing there um, because I didn't have anything selected. So let's go back and select those and add them to the label. OK, so now I've selected them and added them to the label. And when I switch between labels, you can see they're all there. OK, let's get you caught up. Create another label named Sample Drivetrains. You're going to use both of these labels later, so don't skip this step. All right, you got your Sample Drivetrain label set up. You're ready to continue. So there's a list of projects here. If I click on one of these again, I can get details about it. Let's open one of these. We're going to open the basic four motor drivetrain V2. So let's click on that and open it up. And there's our basic four motor drivetrain. When you open a project or workspace, the entire screen changes, or almost the entire screen. At the top here, I still have this on shape um, icon that if I click on that, it'll take me back to my home page. And I still have my user account information and help, but everything else has changed. At the top, it uh, has the name of the project or workspace that I opened and a few other uh, indicators about this project. It is read-only. Um, I could make a copy of it so I could edit it uh, and we will do that later. We'll explain what these are on the uh, these versions are later on. Um, on the left here instead of a navigation pane it has a list of instances that are part of this uh, part of what I have opened here in the main screen. Um, and we'll get into the details of each of these later as well. On the bottom, there's a series of tabs. In this workspace, these are all assemblies. They could also be parts or they could be code. Uh, but uh, for what you're doing, you're going to have mostly assemblies. And we'll explain what those are as well in a minute. Um, on the right over here, we have uh, a cube that allows us to rotate the model. You can also use your mouse for that. And there's, um, there's some other different views that you can get from the navigation on the right-hand side. So one of the things you're going to do commonly when you're inside of, of a model like this is change your view or perspective um, by rotating it. I'm going to right-click on my mouse, and you can see there's a little green circle around my cursor. And um, so I'm clicking on some of the white space in the drawing or model. And then when I move my mouse around, it rotates the view on the screen. Another thing you're going to do a lot of is uh, zooming in and out. You can, um, you can scroll on your mouse, um, and it's going to zoom into where your cursor is. So it, it zooms a little bit differently if I have my cursor over here than if I have my cursor on the other side of the screen. And so if you want to zoom into something in particular like that screw there, um, I'm going to put my cursor over that screw and then scroll. Something you're going to do a little bit less frequently is pan. Um, so to pan, you would use the Alt key or Control key on your keyboard, Control if you're um, a Mac user. So uh, press that key down and then right click on your mouse and you can pan left and right. To select something, you use the left mouse key. We're going to do more of that later. Other ways you can change your perspective is with this cube over here. So if I press on top, I get a top view of the drawing. Um, I can get all these angled views, look at the left, look at the front, look at the bottom. I can use this smaller cube over here to open a list of different predefined views. There's an isometric view, and there's some more realistic views, and then some kind of sketch views, I would call them. You give it a try. I think you're still on your home screen, so go ahead and select that basic four-motor drivetrain, V2, and open it, and then try rotating, zooming, panning, and doing all those other navigations. All right, navigating and drawing uh, takes a little bit of practice, but pretty soon it'll be like riding a bike. It just happens naturally. All right, so we took a look at the home screen. We took a look at a drawing in read-only mode. And now let's take a look at a drawing that we can edit. I'm going to press this button here. It says make a copy. And actually, I could do it from here, too. Copy workspace. Same thing. 
By default, the new workspace is going to be public because the workspace it was copied from was public. And I can change the name up here too. So now the screen is slightly different than what we've been working with, which was a read-only mode. Toolbar that was down here is gone. So let's see, we can change the name of this project now. So we'll just call it my, I'll rename it. There we go. Since I can edit, I get an additional toolbar up here at the top with different edit commands. Um, there's still a list of instances in the navigation bar on the left, and there's, uh, there's still these tabs at the bottom that show different sub-assemblies, and we're going to take a closer look at these two things here. So let's take a look at instances. So the instances have a hierarchy, and uh, so they're organized in what I call a tree view. So the root or the trunk would be the base assembly, in this case it's a chassis, and the smaller parts branch off of that. And so at the top, we have a chassis. If I click on that, it selects the whole thing. Um, there's also sub-assemblies. So this icon here indicates it's going to be assembly. And that, um, that assembly is part of this project. So there's our assembly. If I go back here, I can see that there's two instances of that. So they happen to be exactly the same. Sometimes there's a left and a right that are different, but in this model, they're the same. Um, there's other assemblies here too, a drive rail, and then there's an inside drive rail. Note that it includes a drive rail that we just looked at, uh, but there's a couple motors added to it. And then if we look at the drive sandwich, it has a drive rail, and it also has an inside drive rail, and it has two wheel assemblies. And let's take a look at the wheel assembly. There it is. And it's a wheel with, um, with the spacers and the axle on it. Since we have our own copy of the workspace, we can make changes to it. And since this is just a train exercise, it doesn't matter what we change. Um, we can break it. So we'll delete some things and change some things that you normally wouldn't want to change in your own drawing, but we're going to have some fun destroying this one. I'm going to select the robot battery and brain over here and hide them. So they're still there. Um, they haven't been deleted, but if, for instance, if I wanted to see what was underneath the battery, um, that makes it a little bit easier. And there's this little eyeball icon over here that allows you to hide and show different things. So let's delete the battery now. All right, so it's gone. It's not just hidden, it's gone. Um, another thing we can do is kind of the opposite of hiding one thing is we can isolate it. So let's isolate, and now everything else is um, just barely visible, and we can see through everything else, um, and it's focusing on the brain. So if, for instance, um, you wanted to see something that was underneath, maybe how this was attached right over here, um, I can see the attachment. Whereas if um, I'll get out of isolation mode by clicking on this, um, I really can't see what's there. Let's say I'm looking for a certain, a certain part on it, and I don't even, maybe I have a long list or I just don't see it on the list. I'm gonna look for screw. I filtered it to just show everything in the list that, that's a screw. And some are in sub-assembly, some in our, are in the chassis itself, and I can see every instance of that. I could also narrow it down by looking for half-inch screws. And let's delete one of these screws now too. So there, I went ahead and deleted it. And I'm going to delete something from this drive rail assembly too. So when I right click, I get a menu that allows me to do things to this. And I don't see anything where I can delete it. The reason why I can't delete it is because it's actually part of this drive rail sub-assembly. And from the chassis, you can't make changes to the drive rail assembly. So let's go to the drive rail assembly then and delete a screw from there. And now when I go back to the drive rail inside assembly, I see the screw is missing there. And when I go to the drive sandwich, it's missing there. Um, let's delete a whole assembly from here. Cross the port. Delete. It's gone. Go ahead and delete a bunch of stuff from this workspace. You can delete things from the instances pane and see how that affects the drawing. Or from the drawing and see how things are removed from the instances pane. All right, that's it. You know how to get around an on shape now and you're ready for level three.